I recently finished watching the Netflix uh, series, 13 Reasons Why, and I wanted to throw my two cents into conversation about the about the show and, and, and use as a starting point, the starting point a lot of folks are, are starting from, uh, around whether or not the show glorifies suicide and teen depression. Two thoughts uh, about that. One is, um, it, that's, a, that's a conversation and a question that sounds a lot like the way we have in the past talked about uh, uh, things like hip hop, uh, where in hip hop, uh, um, an artist might be reporting. It's, a, it's this artistic um, journalism. But this is what's happening in the streets in front of my house. This is what's happening in my neighborhood. This is what's going on in my world. I'm reporting it. I'm doing it with some art and, and you know, sort of artistic bent. I'm doing it creatively because I want you to pay attention. And that because it's done well, because it's well articulated and there's some expression to it, that that reporting comes off like a kind of a glorification of violence or whatever. I, so my experience of the show led me to feel like it was more like that. It was more reporting. Now, and this takes me to the sort of second second part of this, my experience of the show. See, uh, my buddy Scott Erickson does a great job of helping people with the questions that they have uh, in relationship to art. And that folks will come to a visual art piece and ask a question like, what does it mean? As if it, the you know, the piece itself has meaning that it's kind of projecting. And sometimes I mean, that may or may not be the case, but but what he says is that's a fine question. That's not a bad question. You know, what, what does the piece mean? But a better question is, what does it draw out of you? What, like, what is this piece drawing out of you? What do you see in yourself? What's happening in you as you experience this piece? So here are a few things that, that the show, uh, or the, the, the Netflix series, 13 Reasons Why, drew out of me. I thought a lot about guilt and shame, and the question of <laughs> the question of how how much do I allow the worst parts of me or my worst historical moments to define me? Like, do I do I honestly feel like that's the stuff that's most real? And I've had this conversation a lot, right? That, that, that we'll say things like, "Hey, let's get real," and part of what we mean by that is let's talk about the stuff that isn't working. Let's talk about the broken stuff. Let's talk about the dark stuff, as if somehow the most real part of you. The most real part of me is what is worst. And I think that's crap. I think it's terrible. But we watch it happen in over the course of these 13 episodes that these characters start to identify themselves and one another primarily by what is wrong, what's wrong in their relationships, what's wrong in them. I thought a lot about guilt and shame. I thought a lot about complicity. I thought a lot about the, the, um, the, the question, <laughs> does the way I live really have to impact the folks around me? that do, do, do my mistakes really have to have an impact on, on other people? And how heavy a weight that is to believe that the way I live matters, that I'm influencing other, other people and my mistakes influence them. That's just so heavy. A friend of mine's got a teenage daughter and he, he was saying that, that his daughter was in a class in high school and they were talking about this show. And, and the discussion for like two class periods was around influences and who was influencing you and talking about, you know. But the context of, of that uh, conversation was all negative, that it was about bad influences and that the sort of the alternate, the, the, uh, the, the, the way out, the way to deal with these influences was to avoid bad influences. But he said that at no point, she said that she came up, she said really no point did anyone talk about positive influences. Like who are your positive influences? Who's, who's having a positive impact, impact on you? And this question, what are the ways in which you can intentionally be positively impacting and blessing the lives of the people around you? So complicity, that I thought about this, it works both ways. Yes, I'm complicit in, at times, like my sin, my brokenness, my busted upness has an impact on the folks around me, my kids, my wife, the folks I love. But I also get to make these really positive choices and think really proactively about the way I live. One of my guests in this season of the podcast called the At Sea Podcast, a guy named Audrey Assad, she, she says, I, I believe like the, in the inner interreactivity uh, of all things, a sort of web of interreactivity. The, the way she lives makes a difference in the lives of other people and that she then kind of positively reorients the way she lives, the decisions she makes, the way she spends 
her money. The complicity works, works both ways, but there's also the way I wrote it down. There's this sort of this redemptive connectedness that I am connected to the people around me, but that doesn't mean that I can I, that the, it's a choice between being negatively impacted or just avoiding or just <laughs> just avoiding negative impact. Like I can positively think about how I'm going to impact other people, and, and that's actually why I love the way the series ended, where you have Clay right there at the end who turns to this this character sky and says hey let's hang out let's spend some time together makes a choice right there in the moment to kind of capture the moment and and to like be, be a blessing be a presence be a light to her even a cost to himself as they skip class i love that the show ended that way it's a show in some ways in a work that's about power i thought about power i thought about um Privilege. And that having power and privilege is not an indictment. It's not a judgment. It's what I do with my power and my privilege. I am complicit. And there are negative parts of me. I don't want to let the negative parts of me define who I am. And part of the way I do that is by recognizing my complicity, by recognizing my redemptive connectedness, and exercising my power to change the lives of the people around me, to bless the lives of the people around me, to grant them access to things that they might have, have access to, to say things that are gonna change their day, their week, their month, their year for the better. The last thing I thought about was this, is, you know, it's not it's not just teen drama. You know, the, the world of, of kids, you know, folks are avoiding Snapchat because it's a bunch of teenagers, but the world of teenagers is a real world. And I, I don't have the wisdom and the discernment to know the difference between who's being super dramatic and who's really actually super busted up. I don't know the difference. And I'm going to guess that a lot of teenagers don't really know the difference either in their own hearts and their own souls and their own minds. Like, what's the, what's the line between me overreacting to something and this like, chaotic world in my heart and my guts in my... So I don't want to. I don't want to blow off, you know, teen drama as if it's just teen drama. I don't want to blow off the selfie thing and oh, they're all so self-interested. I want to pay attention and listen really well to what's going on in the hearts and the minds and the souls of uh, of our teenage sisters and brothers, to recognize again my own complicity as an adult, and to be redemptively connected uh, to that world. Those are the things that the show drew out of me. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you want to leave some, uh, your thoughts in the comments below, of, uh, you know, not only about like what I have to say, but if you had your own thoughts, um, let's chop it up about this, uh, about this, what I think is kind of an essential work in this cultural moment.